Life on Earth depends on the ocean. It covers 71% of our planet, and naturally, people care deeply about it. With its abundant life and vast resources, the ocean means something different to every one of us. We all have our own interests. Generations of fishermen have gained a livelihood from the ocean. Conservationists are committed to protecting it, while a container ship captain needs deep water and direct access to the port via the shortest route. Time is money. So where do our priorities lie when a marine area is home to wildlife, fishing, and shipping at the same time? And what if the situation is complicated by minerals the mining industry wants to extract? Or if an investor plans to build a wind farm? The responsible planner, typically a government official, faces many challenges in dealing with all these demands. Exactly how do you satisfy all these people and their interests? How do you balance using and protecting the same ocean space? Marine Spatial Planning, MSP for short, is a relatively new way of managing human activities that take place in the ocean. It's a long-term and strategic process that guides where, when, and how human uses take place. This can be useful where there are opportunities for new uses or where activities impact on nature. MSP can help to balance competing interests, making sure society benefits while protecting the marine environment. So how do we get started? Firstly, MSP is best carried out by a mandated planning group with a strong, shared vision and clear goals regarding what needs to be achieved. The planners must listen to as many interested parties as possible, and not just at the start, but right through the process. By working together with all those stakeholders that have an interest in the ocean, planners ensure that marine users build trust, commit to the process, and feel ownership of the plan produced with their help. Of course, this will bring questions. Lots of them. Shall we exclude mining from important fishing grounds? Shall we reroute the shipping lanes to make space for marine wildlife? Can we have tourism and conservation at the same time in the same location? MSP begins with an analysis of the current situation. Which locations have the highest natural value? Who is using the planning area? What are the government priorities for the ocean and its use? By drawing together as much data and information as we can on everything from fishing grounds to shipping lanes, from important natural habitats to oil and gas fields, we can map the details to understand some of the key issues that the plan must address. Next, MSP identifies where conflicts and synergies may lie, which activities can be easily combined, which are mutually exclusive. Options for the future are also considered. What trends do we expect in different industries? Deep sea mining operations might look to expand, but what if newly discovered mineral deposits extend into nature conservation and tourism areas? This puts us in a position to develop alternatives and decide on the preferred spatial option. This might involve trade-offs between interests. Reaching a compromise will require negotiation, but this can only be successful if the stakeholders are at the table and can be heard. Once spatial solutions that best accommodate everyone's needs and meet the plan's objectives have been agreed, it's time to set out actions that will ensure the plan's success. These may include areas or policies which prioritize certain uses, such as mining or wind farms, or rerouting shipping lanes to give more space to whales. Such management actions should be developed with input from all marine users and interest groups to help ensure that the plan is supported by as many stakeholders as possible. Once the plan is agreed and adopted, it must be implemented. From this day on, it will guide all marine users where, when, and how their activities occur in ocean space. Finally, MSP is an ongoing process. It involves regular monitoring, evaluation, and revision. Is it achieving what it's supposed to? What do we need to do better next time? What further information do we need? Naturally, things change. The climate, investor interests, politicians, and their priorities. So the plan will need to be adapted over time. If done well, a marine spatial plan will support not just today's livelihoods, but those of future generations. For that very good reason, it's no surprise that MSP is now spreading across the world's seas and oceans.